How are we getting on, folks? Um, look at decent enough day there now today. Uh, look at we had uh nine to one tipped up, but I think it drifted out into sixteen to one. Uh, came in second or third, second I think it was. Uh, with hollowed star for Shark Hanlon. Um, obviously look at Capricorn then twenty to one. I think it was second as well, and Long Q at or Long Q at ten to one. A uh, very nice winner there in the bumper, but. Moving on then to this weekend, I'm going to be leaving off Dundalk like I normally do, but I'm going to be doing a bit of a bumper special for Leopardstown. Um, I think it's it's great racing on, and I think it deserves a little bit more than what I normally do uh, in terms of giving it a bit more publicity and everything else like that. I'm going to be doing something a little, a little bit different. I think it's well worth considering. Um bit more in-depth analysis and all that sort of crack and hopefully look at we'll be able to pick out a couple of winners as well uh at the same time now moving on then to saturday uh this is definitely a great day's racing on the card um in my opinion it's the best day's racing between the two but um look at when you think about it all together it it, it the, the whole weekend is going to be very very good watch um for racing fans and newcomers alike. Uh the first race off the 105. Um it's a it's a tricky enough race to call, really. You have you've Gallard de Manil there ridden by Paul Town and starting off the market there at five to two. Statler then for Danny Mullins at five to one. Cape Gentleman then for Brian Hayes at thirteen to two. Holy Macaponi then at for Rachel Blackmore at eight to one. Ashdale Bob at ten to one for Paddy Kennedy. Uh, gentleman's game then a ten to one for Robbie Power, uh, Fakira then a twelve to one for Jack Kennedy, Shadow Rider then at sixteen to one for Mark Walsh, uh, Vanillier at sixteen to one for Jonathan Moore, Ganapati at sixteen to one for Brian Cooper, Calcas at sixteen to one for Darrell Keith, Funlight then at twenty five to one for JJ Slevin, and Baptism of Fire also at twenty five to one for Sean Flanagan. Now. Trying to pick a winner out of that field, it's it's easier said than done. But I'm going to do my very living best. Uh, there's an awful lot of horses in here that stand up out on clear overall form. Um, in my opinion, you're nearly better off crossing off a few of these. Now, when when looking at all of this, and when looking at general possibility, you try and look for, say... Horses where a, a certain jockey could have multiple rides on. The likes of Paul Townend, he could have chosen Statler, uh, Shadow Rider, Ganapati, but he chose Gallardo Manil. So obviously Gallardo Manil has to stay, and you could sort of write off the likes of Statler, uh, Shadow Rider, and Ganapati, in my personal opinion. Then again, you can look at Rachel Blackmore being Rob Core's number one jockey, as well as Henry de Bromhead's stable jockey as well. She's gone with the the stable the stable sort with Holy Macaponi and and uh, Robbie Power takes the ride in with Gentleman's Game. In my personal opinion, that's a bit of a sign that you could sort of um <laughs> unwillingly write off Gentleman's Game, but in terms of overall capabilities and in terms of overall potential. You have to look at the form wise and you have to look into it as a serious in-depth ana uh, analysis. Um, for me, personally speaking, I think Gennard Gallard de Manil is a bit of a worry at that sort of a price. You look down through the form, he's got a string of seconds, one of them being uh, nearly, I think, nine lengths to Holy Macaponi, who since gone on to be a, a small bit of a flop. Um now, whether that brings Holy Macaponi into it, I don't know. I don't think it does. I think Holy Macaponi prefers um better ground. But then again, maybe the better ground didn't suit uh Gallard de Manil. So obviously you'd have to sort of take that in, into consideration as well. For me though, I think Ashdale Bob at ten to one is the best price for the best overall form. Now let me explain this. Um, obviously look at he fell last time out in Leperstown when, when I think it was I think second or third hurdle in, in the race I'm now 100% sure didn't necessarily get a long way but um, you just look back at the 
the two previous efforts, uh, in particular the one in Navin, when it rode in a grade two event and rode many a horse to sleep in that particular uh, meeting. Now, when you think about it this way, most of these have only gone to win on uh, in, in Maiden Hurdle Company. Now, not a hell of a lot of that is um is great overall form. Now, when you think about Gallard and Manil's form, the the win last time out in Leopard Sound, that form has been backed up. Um, you you have the likes of Maze, is it Golden Maze or Maze Runner? I can't remember which it is, but it's one of the two. Darrow O'Keefe wrote it. Uh, no, it was Rachel Blackmore wrote it in in Clonmel when it won it in a fairly bloodless fashion, and then again you've. Mr. Incredible also ridden by Rachel Blackmore who won in in fairly comfortable fashion in Nace. But they're just maiden hurdles. We don't really know what sort of capabilities they have. Ashdale Bob has gone on to win a grade two. Um, now that stands out a country mile uh, in my personal opinion. And I think it, it's, it's a fair shout to say that Ashdale Bob should be closer to favouritism than he already is like 10 to 1 is a great each way shout for a horse that's already proven that he's well capable of mixing it with group horses uh, compared to a field that's only really won maiden hurdles and we don't really know how good they are uh, that's just being totally honest brutally honest but totally honest as well um, I think Ashdale Bob is the best chance I suppose at an each way perspective and when you're when you're looking to back at an each way price Ashdale Bob is the one to be on. I think I I honestly can't see a horse that's going to beat him to, or beat him Saturday. I think that he has got the measure in Gallard and Manil, but I'd be happy enough with second or third. Really, that's that's all I'm really going to say on the matter. I think Paddy Kennedy is having the best season of his life, uh, ridden or trained by Jessica Harrington. Not going too bad either. At the same time, I know she'd probably want to be a little bit better than what she what what she has been already this season. But that's just down to the fact that William Mullins and Gordon Elliott have been absolutely dominating the national hunt scene in Ireland. Um, I suppose anything else that's going to really take me fancy, um, I don't really know. I think the the second to Dreel deal from Ganapati is interesting. I think Dreel deal is better than what people make him out to be. I think sixteen to one is a little bit, um. A little bit big, but at the same time, I I wouldn't be backing him simply because he's just one of those horses that you don't know what he's going to be like in the day. He could be brilliant. He could be temperamental, let's just say. We won't say he's not good because he he certainly is, but he's just a temperamental sort, and I I think that's a fair statement to make. Um, But in my personal opinion, I can't look past Ashdale Bob. Holy Macaponi probably is, is the next best option in my personal opinion. Uh, but I just don't like Gallard and Manil at that sort of a price. <clears throat> Moving on then to the one thirty five, the the two mile chase. Um, it, it's definitely a very very hot one, and it lives up to the Grade One standard. You have two one seventy plus rated horses in here that are are very very close in in terms of overall quality and capability basically you've Shaq and Pursois heading the market at 4-9 to nine for Paul Townend you've Min then for Patrick Mullins at 4-1 to one. you've Notebook then at 7-1 to one for Rachel Blackmore Size and Potsy at 25-1 to one for Robbie Power Tornado Flyer then at 25-1 to one for Brian Cooper and Fakir did Dairy at 33-1 to one for Mark Walsh now for me personally speaking this is all about one horse Shaq and Pursois and he should be winning this. If he even has a notion of going to the champion chase in March, he should be well capable of polishing off this field. Min is a very, very decent horse, but he's a very decent horse over two mile four. This is over two mile or two mile one, if I'm not mistaken. Now, that's a little bit short for Min. Um, I wouldn't necessarily be backing him each way. I think he is going to finish second because he is the best horse of the rest of the field. But... I think if you're going to be looking at a betting perspective, I think Shaq and Pursois is nearly better to be backing than not. Um, but I would be backing him in a Willie Mullins double, and I'm going to go on to that fairly shortly, but I'm not going to spend too long on this. Shaq and Pursois should be able to well and truly hose up this field, and it should be able to go and win in a fairly comfortable fashion. I won't say it necessarily going to 
win by 10 to 15 lengths, but it's going to win at a, a at a fairly comfortable fashion. Might just need to go hands and heels near the finish with the likes of Min chasing him down. But I, I wouldn't expect to see the whip being drawn. Um, I think he's, he's plenty good to be able to win this hands and heels. Uh, and I think 4 to 9 is... is a, a generally respectable price for a very very talented horse. That's that's all I can really say on the on the whole situation. I don't think there's any, any need to go into too much detail on it. Uh, moving on then to the two ten, um, another very very decent decent chase race. I think it's it's certainly well well deserving of a great great standard, and I I it's certainly headed off. By a very very talented sort, and Nergamine heads the market at eight to eleven for Paul Townend, unexpected then at eleven to two for Mark Walsh, Captain Guinness at fifteen to two for Rachel Blackmore, Franco Deporte at nine to one for Brian Cooper, Felix Deji at eleven to one for Jack Kennedy, Darver Star twelve to one for Jonathan Moore, and Bitter then at twenty five to one for Donna Myler. Um. Who else is there? Blackboard thirty three to one for Danny Mullins, and I'm a game changer at a hundred to one for Darrow O'Keefe. Now, this is going to be the second leg of the double. It's not going to be too exciting, and Nergamine should be winning this. Now, like I said, if this horse has any notion of going to the Arkel and challenging Shishkin, it should be well capable of polishing off this field like it already has done. Now it's beaten Captain Guinness in a fairly comfortable manner in this um last month. Franco de Port, I don't think it it has the capabilities to beat uh Energamin. Felix Deji is a bit of a lunatic. Darver Starr is a bit of a lunatic as well when he wants to be. Uh Black Bow Total lunatic. I, I I can't stress that enough. He's just a total lunatic. Uh, the way I see this starting off, you have the two lunatics in Felix Deji and Blackbow heading off the field. Anergamine is going to be there as well, but Anergamine is very, very slick over the jumps. Um, it, it's no way near erratic as Felix Deji or Blackbow. Um, I think Captain Guinness is going to be midfield or near the back of the field. Uh, unexpected, probably midfield as well. Um, if the likes of him bitter, then probably going to be held up. I'm a game changer. I, I don't think it's going to be even mentioned in it. I think it's going to struggle for most of the race. Uh, and I think that's basically it of, of the whole field. I think it is, yeah. Um, but I would be certainly thinking that an Ergamine should be polishing this field off. I can't see how a horse... Is is going to come up against him like he's one of the fastest horses over chasing fences that that Ireland has to offer. Now, when you when you look at the times in Goran Park, the day when it won, it was over a fence between himself and I think it was hostage to fortune, and then there was I think another fence and a half between himself and Animix if I'm not mistaken, again for Willie Mullins. So when you think about it that way, that's uh, that's a good 20, 25, could be even 40 seconds then on on, the, on terms of Animix, um, in terms of speed statistics. And that's not necessarily bad. It's not that Animix or Hostage of Fortune are bad horses. They're two very decent horses. Um, but I think <laughs> the only one to be able to to match an Ergamine's pace at two mile four is Shishkin. That's that's the only the, they're the only two horses that I can think that I've seen going that going that lick at that distance over the chasing fence. I think the two of them they're going to be very well matched in in the Arkel. I think it's going to be a mouthwater in race. But in terms of betting on Saturday, I think an Ergamine is absolutely nailed on at eight to eleven. Uh, moving on then to the 245, an absolutely wide open race. I'll just give you a look there at the list of runners. Um, all of these are runners, uh, not notes or nothing at all. So trying to find a winner, and this is going to be like trying to find a winner or a needle in a haystack, but we'll give it a go anyway and we'll try our best. Uh, the field is headed off by in two casts here at 6 1 for Mark Walsh, Epson Du at uh, 6 1 for Rachel Blackmore, Pontavon at 6 1 for Danny Mullins, Aramax at 13 2 for Jody McGarvey, the Shunter then at 7 1 for Brian Hayes, Emily Moon at 11 1 for Sean O'Keefe, 
Port Stanley then at 12 to 1 for Robbie Power. Jan Matt at 14 to 1 for Hugh Morgan. Uh, Shoe Time at 14 to 1 for Kevin Bruder. Capucha Mix then at 16 to 1 for Daryl O'Keefe. Uh, Wave of the Scene and a 16 to 1 for Simon Torrens. Uh, Ordinary World at 20 to 1 for Sean Flanagan. And the Loser at 20 to 1 for Brian Cooper. Uh, Grand Partner at 20 to 1 at Third Reserve. <coughs> um, where was I? Uh, Kildari then at 25 to 1 for Conor McNamara. Uh, Timoteo uh, at 25 to 1 for Jack Wildman, who is the first reserve. Uh, you jump the last, you win at 25 to 1, partnering up with Jonathan Moore, but, but a second reserve. Uh, Machuca then at 33 to 1 for Ricky Dyle. Uh, Arvico Blue at uh, 33 to 1 for Emma Toomey. Top Moon then at 33 to 1 for JJ Slevin. Bellamy de Sivilla at 33 to 1 for Dennis O'Regan. Arjan de Somoza at 40 to 1 for Jack Kennedy. And Gulen chosen at 50 to 1. And I forgot to write the name of the last jockey. Um, I can't think of the name. I think it's Carl Thornton's horse for. If I'm not mistaken, it's Kevin Sexton. But I could be totally wrong. Normally, Kevin rides for Thornton. But I, like I said, I could be totally wrong and it could be totally off. But um, it's wide open. Like, you could make a strong case for, I'd say, 10, 15 of these. Um, a wave of the sea being one of the only course and distance winners in the field. And he's 16 to 1. But he's, he's just a total... I he, he's so frustrating, like because you can't actually read how the horse is going to perform. He's just so double standard, really. Like he's either going to absolutely hose up on the day, or he's just not going to turn up at all. He's just going to literally stand at the start, and he's just not going to want to go. But I can understand how people would make a case for him. Um, shoe time as well. We'll love the ground at 14 to 1. But for me, Aaron Max at 13 to 2 is the one to be following here for Jody McGarvey and Gordon Elliott simply because of the statistics and the form wise. <clears throat> it's one of the only horses in here to win at the Cheltenham Festival. Now, I know it was over hurdles and I know it was, um, I suppose, well thrown in in terms of the handicap stat or statistics. But when you look at the overall form of the horse and when you look at the, the whole the whole card in, in, in general, Aramax only really saves his best for February and March. You look back at last February, he won two on the bounce before going on to... No, he actually won one on the bounce and he won one once then in the Cheltenham Festival that's exactly it now he won that race on the 8th of February um, that was I think his his only win um, of his career up to then before going on to Cheltenham before hosing up in in uh, I can't even remember what race it was but it was a handicap hurdle of some sort now when you think about it this way Aramax hasn't necessar- necessarily performed to a, a great standard, let's just say, until his last run. Now, his last run was sometime last month. I think it was mid-January to late January, if I'm not mistaken, it was. Now, when you think about last year, he first came to form, uh, like I said, in the 8th of February, uh, notching up a fairly comfortable victory before going on to win in a fairly comfortable fashion in the Cheltenham Festival. Now, I think this is this is sort of a mirror effect that's happening with Aramax here. I think the fact that he's slowly but surely starting to get into his own and he's starting to get used to the chasing fences now, I think that's definitely going to be the key to his success. Jody McGarry is a very, very talented jockey. Don't get me wrong. But there are a num- number of horses in here that you can make a case for. The likes of poor Stanley, uh, Jan Matt, well... Uh, not really now, but you could have made a case for him a few years ago. Uh, shoe time, I'd definitely make a case for him. A wave of the sea if he turns up. Um, pff, there's not really anything else in here. Grand partner if he gets in, actually. He's a dangerous horse to, to over overlook. If he gets in at 20 to 1, <clears throat> I'd nearly be tempted to have a bet on him myself. I think he, he, between himself and I think there's only one or two more. Himself and a wave of the sea, I think, are the only two course and distance winners in this field. <coughs> Jeez, I've been off a frog in my throat tonight. But um I I honestly can't look past 
uh, Aaron Max here. In, in all honesty here, I, I think all, all things considered, I think it's going to be between Aaron Max, the shunter, uh, shoe time, a wave of the sea and grand partner if he gets in. They're the five that you want to be looking at. And I think they're the five that's that's most likely winners. Look at Epson Do is is certainly in great, great form. But I just I think the handicapper might just be catching up on him now a little bit. And I just think he might be a little bit exposed. Uh but moving on then to the three fifteen, the Irish champion hurdle and the main race of the day. Um look at Honeysuckle tries to defend defend her crown. Uh, she heads the market there 11 to 8, uh, partnered with Rachel Blackmore. <coughs> uh, Sharjah then at 2 to 1, uh, par- partnered with Patrick Mullins. San Ra at 13 to 2 for Mark Walsh. <coughs> Jeez, I'm losing my voice. Um, Abacadabra at 10 to 1 for Jack Kennedy. Saldier at 11 to 1 for Paul Townen. And Petty Mouchoir at 14 to 1 for Brian Cooper. Now, for those who would know me personally, they'd know how much I absolutely adore Honeysuckle. And th- for those who might know, I'll just give you a prime example. The time I was working as a stable hand in Stephen Mahan, Stephen's ac- Stephen actually gave me the nickname Honey <laughs> because I wouldn't shut up about Honeysuckle. Um, and I know I could make a serious case for her, the fact that she's undefeated and everything else like that. But I just think she's starting to be found out now. I just think people are starting to realise that she's not she's not totally unbeatable. Um I'm not saying that she's not a great horse. She certainly is a great horse. She's 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 one of the best mares in training at the moment. But I just think that she's a little bit I suppose exposed now at the moment. She was very, very nearly caught to run and pumped last time out over two mile four. I, I know dropping back down to two mile is, is certainly going to be a big, big plus for her. But in last year's race as well, she was very nearly caught by Darver Star. And when you look at Darver Star's form, second to Honeysuckle by half a length, then went on to Cheltenham, was four lengths behind a certain Sharjah here, currently going in here at two to one. And for me, this is going to be the nap of the day. Uh, when you look at all things considered, like I said already with uh, the, the form of Darver Star, um, the, the the fact he, he himself was, was second in the champion hurdle, um, I, I just think that he, he's he's a little bit underrated here. And the, the 2020 Matson hurdle winner, he, he's certainly no slouch. And I think... In terms of price wise, I think Sharjah is definitely the more better value. And as well as that, when you consider Sharjah is, is being ridden by Patrick Mullins. Now Patrick Mullins is an amateur, as you all know. In these sorts of races, amateurs are only given twenty five chances per year. To I think it's twenty five. I could be wrong, but I'm nearly sure it's twenty five to ride in races like this against professionals. Now the fact that Paul Townend goes with Saldier. I wouldn't necessarily think it's interesting. I think he he he, he certainly is within in his rights to be be considered. But I I think Willie and Patrick have a bit of an agreement here that Sharja will be ridden by his son simply because it's going to be a far, father son connection. Sharja is the most likely winner of the two Willie Mullins horses, and I think it, it, they're aiming for a bit of a special occasion here. I think two to one is a great great price for Sharja. Um, as as well as that, look at Sharjah is technically rated higher than Dan Honeysuckle in terms of overall capabilities, capabilities and overall potential. So when you think about it that way, um, Honeysuckle is definitely going to need her mare's allowance, and she's definitely going to need that seven pounds, and she'd want to use it with a, with with full capability. Because Sharjah is no slouch and Sharjah is well capable of, of putting in a decent performance in any sort of ground. You just look at the champion hurdle. He's won the Galway hurdle back in 2018. He's won the Madison hurdle in 2020. He's a Leperstown absolute stalwart. Um, I just think that Honeysuckle is there to be shot at this year. And I think she's worth taking on at a price of 11 to 8 for something better value and I think Sharjah is the best value horse of the day um, I, I can't understand how he is 2 to 1 uh, simply because of his experience and his overall potential I know look at 
she is getting seven pounds of a mayor's allowance, but she certainly needs it. Like, um, you think of the the Irish champion hurdle last year. Like, we thought she was beaten after going over the last. She she stepped at it, but she did find a way to get back, and she did manage to just claw back victory. And I know that's a big big plus in terms of overall performance, but I just don't know. I think today is going to be the day where she gets find out and I, I hope I'm wrong because I absolutely love her but Sharjah is the one to be on in my personal opinion I think at 2-1 to one, it's a great great price in, in in a realistic in a realistic world let's just say Um, 3.50 then the another wide open race Um, <laughs> it's a hard one to call look at Advance Fargo 6-1 to one for Kevin Bruder for Charles Burns, I don't know how that's happened. Whether he's going to be serving his his six month ban at at a later stage, but I I don't know. I don't know how he's doing it. Uh, the might last fire flyer then at seven to one for Mark Walsh. Ciel Asia ten to one for Johnny McGarvey. Drop the anchor. It's ten to one for Simon Torrance. Esky Lane at eleven to one for Dennis O'Regan. Uh, Blue Sari at twelve to one for Donny McInerney. Um. Front view at twelve to one for JJ Slevin. He's a hardy bloke at twelve to one for Sean Flanagan. Yoridale at 10, twelve to one for Aubrey McMahon. Build me up Buttercup at fourteen to one for Paul Town and Stratham at fourteen to one for Barry or Brian Hayes. Gabby Naku at sixteen to one for Jonathan Moore. Champagne Gold at sixteen to one for Rachel Blackmore. Sandaru at sixteen to one for Jack Kennedy. Golden Jewel at 16 to 1 for Chris Timmons. West Cork Wildway. The, the Cork men are teaming up. Paul O'Flynn and Darrow Keefe at 20 to 1. The very man at 25 to 1 for Conor McNamara. Uh, e. Claire de Bofu at 25 to 1 for Jordan Gainford. Tiger Tap Tap at 25 to 1 for Danny Mullins. Um, Highbury 25 to 1 is a reserve. Uh, Dimash Portois 33 to 1 for Robbie Power. Jesse Evans 33 to 1 is a reserve. Uh, never do nothing at his forty one as a reserve. Wakia at fifty to one for Donna Meyer, um, at fifty to one, and Harter Trumps at fifty to one for Anya O'Connor. This for me is very very tricky. There's so many of these you could make cases for. Um, the likes of he's a hardy blokes in great great farm. Uh, Yoridel being paired up with Aubrey McMahon for the, for his own family. Um, build me up Buttercup then. <clears throat> Very close in, in Cheltenham there last year. Um, pfft, what else is there? Sandaru should be loving the ground, I would imagine. West Cork Wildway is a very dangerous horse to overlook for, for Darrell O'Keefe for 20 to 1. But for me, the best form in the race and the best price horse in the race is Gabby Naku at 16 to 1 for Gavin Cromwell and Jonathan Moore. Let me just go through this now, basically. When you look at the size of this field, you're going to be looking at five places. That's the, it's as simple as that. I wouldn't bet in this race if they weren't offering me five places. Um, and you're definitely more looking for an each way bet than a, than a straight up win bet. But for me, I think Gabby Naku has a great, great chance in this. Um, it, it's serious each way value. Like 16 to 1, you, you wouldn't turn your nose up at it. It's always run a very credible race. It's It's been ahead of the likes of Fakire, who's a very decent sort for... Um, Gordon Elliott and is running in, in a few races pre or before this as well. Um it was third behind Bob Ollinger, who who is one of the, the best novice novice hurdlers in, in the division in Ireland at the moment. Um never out of the top three with in, in its whole career, like it, the horse has never been out of the, the first three for places like so in terms of an each way perspective like he's always a very consistent sort and always a, a very profitable sort um, it, it stands out a country mile that that form with Bob Allinger I can't get away from it I think in in overall capabilities I think Gabby Naku is well worth considering I think overall um, the form is definitely standing up and I certainly think that if given a great shot in front and if given a little bit of a leeway in front, which I think there will be considering the field is so big, I think Gabby Naku is going to win this race. And I think I'm going to put the nail to the sword and I'm going to say Gabby Naku is going to be one of the next best horses of the day at a price of 16 to 1. I, I certainly think it, it's it, it's great, great value there. The 4.25 then. 
uh, last race of the day, the bumper that was won by Appreciated last year. Um, let's be clear about it uh, for Finney Maguire, Chemical Energy then for Jamie Codd, Anglers Craig at... Um, I, I, I actually haven't the prices written down, but for uh, D. Allen, I can't, I, I think it's Danny Allen, uh, Kill Crew then for Patrick Mullins, Noble Yates for Derek O'Connor, Ramsey Lees at, uh, or for Barry O'Neill, Ever Present then for M. McGrain, I think the name of it is, uh, T's Component, yes for Ronnie O'Connor, The Banger Dial for Noel McParlin, uh, and What Do You Want for Tom Hamilton? Now, for me, I think that chemical energy is the only horse that I looked up the price for and it's 11 to 4 but I certainly think that this horse is the best overall potential in this, this race alone uh, you look at the form book it, it, it finished ahead of the likes of um, on Eagle's Wings there for the, the Hides who has turned out to be a very serious horse and it's turned out to be a very profitable horse for them. Never out of the top two. That's that's a given fact for on Eagle's Wings. So in overall capabilities, like you could definitely be looking at a graded horse. I honestly think that um, Chemical Energy here, the likes of Let's Be Clear About It, Kill Cruis, Ramsillies, um, Ever Present, T's Component, Yes, They've all been beaten and they've all been, I suppose, exposed as potentially beatable. Chemical Energy hasn't been beaten yet. And it's the only one apart from what do you want for Tom Hamilton. They're the only two, I think, that are the the only unbeaten horses in this particular race. Now, what do you want? I, I certainly would be considering and I, I would be suggesting maybe whatever price he is, to, if he is at an each way market, to have a bit of an each way punt on him. The fact that he's, he's, I think, a half-brother to Hardline or a three, three parts brother to Hardline, it, it's definitely one of the best bloodlines in the race. But in terms of overall capability, chemical energy at 11-4 to 4 for Jamie Codd is certainly well worth considering. Um, I personally think he should be deserving of inner around even money. Um, the fact that he's unbeaten and the fact that the form has st- stood up a country mile, it, it's certainly... It's certainly well worth considering in my personal opinion. And I think 11 to 4 is a great, great price. Now, moving on to Sunday, I was expecting to, to I suppose, go into a bit more detail on it. But the fact that there's no prices up and the fact that uh, my voice is starting to go, um, I'm just going to basically run through what I have at the moment before declarations have been set. Um, If things change in the meantime, I'm going to be back on tomorrow to... I suppose do another bit of a preview like this one and uh, hopefully it'll go as well as hope uh, as well as we hope. Um, but for me, I'm just going to run through them. 110, I like Dicer Diamond. Uh, 140 then, I'm going to be going with Quilixius. 210, I'm going to be doing a forecast with Appreciated and Cask Mate. I think that's a very, very nice sort of reverse forecast there. Uh, 240 then, Unexpected debt for... Uh, Oliver McKiernan, who's in serious form. 310 is going to be my nap of the day. Monkfish, I don't know what price he is or what price he's going to be, but he, he's he's going to be winning tomorrow or Sunday anyway. That's a given fact. 340 Delta Work in the Gold Cup at 4 to 1 is certainly well worth considering. 410, the long mile um, in serious form and, and should be well considered in heavy ground. And finally, then 440, next best of the day, take T, should take plenty of beating now that she's joined the wonderful colours of JP McNaman or McManus McNamara. Um, look at that's all I have. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much more time on it. Uh, please make sure to keep liking, sharing, and subscribing. Uh, sorry for the length of the video. I wanted to try and do something special for Leopard Sound and hopefully you all enjoy it. Um, I hope I'm not going to have too sore of a throat tomorrow because I, I, can, I can feel it coming on already. But uh, look, at please make sure to keep liking, sharing, and subscribing. If I've made you money any way at all this week, hit that subscribe button. Like It, it only takes you a second and it helps me out an awful lot. Uh, for those who might want to join up with the patron after hearing my in-depth analysis, uh, I leave a link in the description below. It's a tenner a month. Um, basically, what you see is what you get. You're 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 getting winning tips. Um, more often than not, every day. But as well as that, for the for the days we don't necessarily hit our target wins, but uh, we do. 
offer up, say, I, I suppose you could call them monthly giveaways or monthly raffles uh, with some great, great prizes. Like, for instance, there now in January, we gave away a, a year share in the horse due up till uh, January 2022. So for a tenner a month, you can't really go wrong. Uh, you, you really help us out at the end of the day. It's there to to fund the Irish Racing Corner podcast, which is there to, I suppose, give light to the people that, that uh, deserve it most and give airtime to people that don't necessarily get a hell of a lot of it, but but they put in so much effort into the industry, it, it it's certainly well-deserved. Um, But that's all I have. Uh, like I said, please make sure to keep liking, sharing and subscribing. If you're going to be having a bet, uh, I hope you all, ha- I, I wish you all the very best of luck. But, um, I'll see you after this weekend. Hopefully, look at us. It's a good one. And hopefully, we're on the back of plenty of winners. Thanks very much. Hope you enjoyed the show. And uh, we'll see you now next week. Thanks very much.